Greetings hobbies, this is Arsans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at the add-on Mesh Machine. So Mesh Machine is a paid for add-on and you access it by hitting the Y menu. And you can see there's a lot of different options there and we're not going to have time to go through everything in this video. So what I'm going to do is break this into a couple of videos where we're going to look at the different sections of this and at least the way that I approach this or think about them. And I generally divide Mesh Machine into four major groups, manipulating bevels, manipulating booleans, plugins, and then just the utility bits that you get as well with it. So in this video, we're going to have a look at how it will help you with beveling. And if you want videos on the other areas of Mesh Machine, hit the like button or say so in the comment section, and I'll add it to the list of things to do. So let's just start with this and what the general idea of Mesh Machine is, or at least in my opinion, when dealing with bevels. And that is to make bevels almost as if they're non-destructive in nature, which is one of the issues with Blender, that once you've beveled something, you end up with that permanently there. And undoing or modifying this later could be quite tricky if you want to come back to this after you've done other things. And this is one of the issues with something like Blender in comparison to a maths-based piece of software like Plasticity. And that's why I like Mesh Machine so much because it pretty much takes away that weakness of Blender straight out. So what we've got here is a cube and I've added a chamfer. Now a chamfer is just a bevel. So if I control and B here and scroll up on my mouse wheel, then you can see that we've got a bevel and a chamfer is just a single segment bevel. But Mesh Machine does work on this in a slightly different way. I'm guessing there's some mathematics behind that. So let's start going through those functions. So I'm going to go into face mode and select the face that is our chamfer. If I press Y, you can see suddenly a lot more of these options are showing. And we're going to start with the simple ones for chamfers. And that is that you can change the width. So you can move this backwards and forwards to change your width after the fact, which is really useful. You've also got buttons like T, so you can add in a taper. And you can flip that taper with F. So you can change the width of the individual edges. So let's press T again to turn that off. So you can play with that as much as you want, but really useful to be able to change the width of this afterwards if you just decide that you want to do something different. Now I should mention if I come to edge mode, you can, you're probably thinking, do this in standard Blender as well. If instead of doing this, you add in a bevel modifier. So I'm actually gonna use hard ops to do this just to speed it up. So I'm gonna click Q and then control click on mark. And that is going to add, if I scroll down to one, either a bevel or a chamfer onto this. And this is fully non-destructive. This is a modifier. If I come into the modifier panel over here, you can see that we've added in a bevel modifier. And the way this works importantly is by adding a vertex group to the two vertices that are on the end. So that's going to allow this to happen. And because it's a modifier, we can come back later and change the amount. So the size of it, we can also change the amount of segments, which is really useful. But there are issues with this because this is a vertex group. If you want to do this, let's say I wanted to go and do this on this edge, it's then going to start getting confused because you're going to be putting this one single vertex on the corner into two separate vertex groups. And there's definitely issues with this, but it is nice that you can fiddle around with it really quickly and there are positives to this as well. So it's just using the right tool for the right thing. But if this is gonna become a complicated object with a lot of different elements to it, that's definitely gonna be a problem. And you also can't access those edges that have been created by this. So as I say, you just need to decide what you want to do. Let's go into face mode and select this face again and we're gonna Y. And the other thing we can do is unchamp for this so we get rid of it totally. And you can also add weights to this as you do that or a sharp edge. So effectively, this has almost become non-destructive, which is great, right? Let's bring that back in as a single chamfer. The other thing we can do with the single chamfer we go to face mode again is Y and we can fuse it. And what that will do is turn it into a multi-segment bevel. And we can change how many edges we're gonna have on that. So scroll up on my mouse wheel. So for example, I can put that up to 12. And you can see on the menu all of the options you've got. So I can press W and that is going to change the width of this. So you've got all of those other things you can do. You can also, if you want to hit Y and go to refuse, don't go to change width. This is only for chamfers, refuses for bevels. And then you can do all the other things that you want to do. So for example, I can once again press W to change the width and then W again to stop. And you can also do things like T to change the tension. So for example, I can make it more pointed or less pointed or things like that. The standard tension for this is 0.7. So just know that. And you press the same button again to stop doing it. So there's a few options in there that you can play around with, but those are the major ones that I use. So there we go. That is the basics of what we can do. So you can also unfuse it, turn it into a single chamfer, I'm gonna escape out of that, or we can Y and then unbevel and get rid of it again. So whatever you're dealing with, you can either change it from a chamfer to a multi-segment bevel, 
or back again or get rid of it entirely. Right, let's just go into something a bit more complex. I'm gonna go into those edges and then I want these edges around the side. And we can also, if I control and B, bring in a chamfer here, we can see that we start to get a slight issue with these corners. And the reason I say it's a slight issue is if I go to face mode and I alt click there, it won't recognize this as a loop because we haven't got quads. This is a triangle. And this can be a little bit annoying for certain things and also it will cause problems. But again, they've thought of this. So if I select one of these triangles and hit Y, we can go to a quad corner and it's going to turn this into a quadrilateral corner. And you can move your mouse forward or backwards to change the width of this. You can also scroll up and down to change which corner this is going to affect. So that's really nice that if you want to do the top or the bottom or whatever, you can do that. So what I'm gonna do is put that to 0.6 and click. And what's useful is if you go to the next one and hit Y and quad corner, it'll keep the settings the same generally, though sometimes it gets confused which way you're trying to do this. Just scroll up or down without moving and it will be at 0.6. So, so that's really useful just to be able to get everything sorted so that you can then do things like select the entirety of an edge loop and then we can potentially fuse this. The other thing this is quite useful for is it does make quad topology on those corners, which normally it wouldn't have. Obviously it doesn't on the top, but you could just do something like there and there, and then you'll have quads. So we've got a quad there. So that's four corners, four corners and four corners. There are other ways of setting this up to be quad topology, but that's quite useful for a variety of things if you're worried about quad based topology. The other thing you can do is if you go to face mode and Y, you can turn the corner so you could just change which corner is being affected again to one of the other ones. And again, you can change the width. I'm gonna escape out of that to just leave that the same. Now we're gonna get into a couple of the functions that are a little bit more clever, I guess would be the word, but they really help with problems or issues you can come up with when doing this. And the first one is the flatten option. Now I'm gonna sort of go out a bit of this bevel idea as well when we come onto this, just to talk about this and how it works and what you can do with it. But effectively the idea of this is that if I click on a face and then click on another face and click Y, it will flatten the first face to the second face. So for example, if I go flatten there, it will have flattened everything out. Obviously in this instance, that is a really bad choice because it's gonna cause some problems with the shapes. But where this becomes really helpful is let's say I come to this edge here and I decide that I want this one beveled, but just this one. So I'm gonna Y and I'm gonna fuse this. Let's keep the width exactly the same and let's go up to 16 say, and then click. And we've got this problem here that now, well, this is probably not what we want. It's not exactly a smooth object. But what we can do is click that face, click the face that we want to flatten it to, and then hit Y and flatten. And you can see we now get this really, really nice flattened off object. And I could do the same over here, Y and flatten. And we've got that. And hopefully you can agree that makes for a really, really nice set of potential things that you can do. So let's come out of that. And what I'm gonna do is just make a separate cube. So shift A mesh and then cube. And then let's bring that over here and just talk about this slightly separately because this is actually a really powerful thing that this can do. And I just wanna talk about how this works. So if I just come into vertex mode and then G and then Z that up, well, you can see that we've got a problem with this object in that we've now got this face that is not flat. It's got this curve to it. And you can fix this so that Blender's not gonna have an issue with it. I could go into vertex mode and let's say join those two there. And then we've got two separate faces and that's great. And if we want to, we can go into face mode and let's say I want to select this one and then that one, Y and then flatten it. And it's now sorted that out. I should say, if you press Y and flatten, you do have the option of it dissolving the edge or you can press D so that you have the edge still there. Or we could do it the other way around. So I could select that face and then that face, Y and then flatten and it will do it the other way around. Now, if we do this again, the other thing that we can do with this is we don't have to do this on two separate faces. We can do this on one face and this is really clever. What we do is we select three vertices. So let's say that vertex, that vertex and that vertex. And then we run the flatten tool and what this is going to do from my understanding is without you having to do anything, it's going to effectively think about this like it is now one flat surface between the three vertices. So it's basically thinking of it like this, even though we haven't done it. And if I bring up my normals visibility and put that up, what it's gonna use is then say, well, if we've got a face here, it would have this normal and then it's gonna apply the normal to the rest of the face. 
So let's just come back here. Let's get rid of those normals and we'll give it a go. So there, 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 Y and then flatten and it's flattened it out. So you can use this to fix certain issues that Blender might have with non-flat faces as well, though you've got to be careful using it that way. The other thing that I should mention, which is a little bit funky and just a sort of product of the way Blender works is if you're doing it this way, you don't have to do it in vertex mode. For example, if I select Let's do it this way around this time. That edge and that edge. Do realize that while to us it's showing us edges to Blender, this is actually selected vertices. It's selected, if I go into vertex mode, those three vertices. So you can actually go to edge mode and select two edges as long as they're in a corner and then Y and flatten and it will also flatten it. So there's lots of really useful tricks that you can use with the flatten tool. So I'm a massive fan of that. I really like it. So the last thing that we probably need to mention on this, so let's just Y and unchamp for that. Oh, and we'd need to unchamp for that as well. And those ones. So as I said, you can see how powerful this is to pretty much undo everything that you've done previously so that you can get back to original shapes like a cube or whatever situation you had here. Now, if I go into Edge mode again, control and B, and then let's scroll that up. So we've got a bevel here, and then let's control and B, and we're gonna have a smaller bevel here. And you might wanna do something like go into face mode, I to inset that face and do something like that. And you might want to extrude this in, but you'll notice we've got all of these problems with our faces there. We've got this ugly issue here. We've got a lot of problems here as well. And that is if I come back, and then I, because as soon as we go too far, we screw up everything as our vertices and our edges, let's go to edge mode, start intersecting each other. And if I go to face mode, we can see we've got a face there that's doing whatever the hell is going on there. And normally you can fix this without Mesh Machine as well. If I go into vertex mode and select all of those vertices, you can M and then merge at center. And this does an okay job, but you'll notice now that this top edge isn't flat. It's at an angle and this might not be what you want. We've now got a load of triangles. We don't have quads and yeah, not that quads are really important, but it's just something you want to pay attention to. And this wasn't what I wanted as a final result. So what we can do instead is fix this. And we've got a really nice option in Mesh Machine to do that. If I go to edge mode, all we have to do is select the edge before the bevel and then all of the edges in the bevel and the one after it. And so you can just do that by selecting one, holding control and selecting the edge outside and then you've got everything selected. And then we can click Y and click the UnFCK. Now, just to be clear, I've not got some weird dislike of swearing, but I am a teacher in a secondary school and college and I really don't need my students having a sound mite of me saying that. So if we click this, it will allow us to move backwards and forwards to change how the bevel has worked just on that inside section. So you'll notice that this line, the line that's in green, isn't changing. So this is staying perfectly flat and we can sort of match this up to the other edge. You can also, if you get to a certain bit, scroll up and then it will do this to both of them. So that's an option. So you can change the original one or just keep it exactly the way you want it. And then let's say click there. So we've now got that not being a problem. You can also change the tension on this. So let's do that again. So for example, this is looking a bit different in tension and roundness to the other side. So I can Y use the UnFCK and press T to change the tension. And if you do that, tension is up and down and then width is left and right. Or you can press W to stop playing around with the width and just play around with the tension. And if you go to 0 0.5, it will more match this sort of, I say perfect, but you sort of get what I mean. It's sort of, a, it's more spherical. And that solved all of those problems. In fact, actually, let's do that again. And T to stop fiddling with the tension, W to start fiddling with the width, and we can go to somewhere like there. So now we've solved that problem. So really, really cool tool there that we can play around with. Now I'm just gonna delete that out and mention one other thing that we can do with this. I don't know if this is intentional, but I really like that you can do it. Say we've got a bevel here and we want to change the width of it, but we only want to change the width on one side. You can use this tool to then fiddle around with the width just on one side. So for example, I could do that. So it's quite useful to be able to come back afterwards and be able to change around bevels. It also allows us to do really cool things like if we go into vertex mode and let's GG that. So now it's not equal. I could select all of those edges 
and then y and on f c k and it's going to equal them out so they're now more equally spaced along this or proportionally spaced i should say along this it's not perfectly equal in terms of length but you can see what we can do to start manipulating our bevels and then if i wanted to i could select those with face mode and then y and then refuse to up that so yeah, lots and lots of fun there that we can do with bevels and modifying things around to get different shapes and different looks. So hopefully you can see how powerful that is in terms of being able to play around with bevels that you've got in objects in an almost non-destructive style. If you found that useful, please do hit that like button. And as I said, if you want to see more on Mesh Machine, probably going through how it helps with booleans, do let me know in the comment section. And if you aren't subscribed, hit subscribe so you know when that comes up. And if you want to support the channel further, it does have a Patreon page. The link is in the description. And for a few dollars a month, you get these videos ahead of time and ad free. And if you want to, you can up to a higher tier to get a range of 3D files and other bits over the course of a month. Have a great day, guys.